Look, ZZ, I, I know. I... Shark, I know it's I Halloween. Really I just have no idea what to here. do. You need to cover something. Wait, I think... Hello? Shoot. This again. Guess I'm going to the breaker. What in the... No. No, 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 no. This can't be happening. Oh, no, 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 no. Guys, gals, and all those outside and in between. I'm Sharp Z. And welcome to whatever this place is. I think it's best if we start where it all began. Now, for a lot of people who are fans of the series, they know this and have probably heard this plenty of times, so humor me, I'm chained to a chair. Silent Hill released in 1999 on the original PlayStation, and was developed by Team Silent, a team Konami created from various developers who were viewed as hard to work with, or just weren't performing up to expectations. They told these developers to essentially make a Resident Evil competitor, and while Silent Hill definitely has some of that DNA, the development reveals what has made it so different. See, the team kept missing deadlines, and Konami eventually just backed away and gave up. This lack of oversight led to perhaps one of the most unique horror experiences ever created. Hopefully that's the way out. No other way I can think of. Silent Hill 1 starts with our protagonist Harry Mason crashing his car into the town of Silent Hill. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. The scariest part is that we don't know whether or not Harry has insurance. After exiting the vehicle, he notices that his daughter is... gone? She's standing over in the fog, and Harry decides to follow her because... Well, I mean, it's his daughter. I, I don't think I'd, I, I need to explain that. Harry makes chase, walks into a sketchy alleyway, and is quickly murdered by children. So that was Silent Hill. It was an incredibly short game, but I enjoyed what was there. No, I'm just kidding. Harry wakes up in a dungeon, only to find that he was saved, presumably by this police officer. She reveals that her name is Sybil Bennett, and she reads Harry his rights. His Second Amendment rights. Okay, fine, she gives us a statement. Was I dreaming? What do you want me to say? As is Tramerican tradition, if you just meet someone random in a town, they're legally obligated to give you a gun. This is where the game kind of loosens the reins a bit. We finally can walk out onto the streets of Silent Hill, and, well, this is where we get our first taste of the combat. And the enemies that come out from the fog, they can be dealt with in multiple ways. One way is to 
as you see here, shoot them. This is the most obvious way, and by far the easiest. However, you have a limited amount of ammo. Which is why Silent Hill actually provides you with one other option, melee combat. Now, melee combat wasn't exactly a brand new thing. I mean, if we're talking in general, I think the moment that someone realized they could hold a stick, they realized they could beat someone with it. So, you know, it didn't exactly invent the idea of whacking things with a lead pipe. But, what Silent Hill did do is make a melee system in a survival horror game that actually feels like a viable risk reward. Simply put, compared to other survival horror games, in particular Resident Evil, Silent Hill allowed the player to, well, use melee combat as an alternative. If you were to ask me for a weapon that I think is distinctly Silent Hill, it's the Iron Pipe. Which I know sounds weird, but my friend Mrs. Kneecaps here is... Well, <laughs> oh boy, the iron pipe is something that's not designed to be a weapon. Usually when you find it, you pull it from somewhere in an act of desperation. But with that being said, the iron pipe is one of the recurring themes within Silent Hill. Mainly because it allows you to space enemies out and hit them fairly easily early game. Usually it's one of the first melee weapons you find, and while it's not one of the best, it's certainly better than the knife in Resident Evil. I'm not saying I hate Resident Evil's knife mechanics, but more so this mechanic is easier to grasp, and pitched as an alternative to constantly using guns. This actually reminds me of two more mechanics I love. Let's go over the brief one first. The radio allows you to hear when enemies are nearby, and this does wonders for the atmosphere. Just walking through a slow, foggy road, and then you just hear the radio begin to crackle, and you know that something's out there, but you can't quite see it yet. It, it really gets to you. But more so than that, there's my favorite mechanic in any old survival horror game. A mechanic which plays with the system of downing enemies. See, whenever you hit an enemy, they lay on the ground. This doesn't necessarily mean they're dead, it means you might still have something left to do. And oh man, let's show this! I am a completely stable individual who you can totally trust. Aside from fulfilling a need I didn't even know I had, the curb stomp allows you to take out enemies that you've already downed. Now, while on the surface this might seem like it's there to make it easier to take out enemies, it's more so there because they will come back if you forget to do this. It's not necessary every time, but it will help you save ammo as well. And it's also just incredibly satisfying. We make our way over to the elementary school, and this is where we're introduced to some of the first puzzles in the game. And, well, I love the puzzles. This, like this one involves using the piano, and, well, I'm gonna be honest, the this puzzles in Silent Hill kind of differentiated as well. Not necessarily in what the puzzles are, it wasn't uncommon to see weird see, puzzles involving everything from pianos to statues, but what Silent Hill does is presents them in this manner of speaking that almost sounds like a riddle. First flew the greedy pelican, eager for the reward, white wings flailing. Then came a silent dove, flying beyond the pelican, as far as he could. A raven flies in, flying higher than the dove, just to show he can. A swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. Finally, out comes a crow, 
coming quickly to a stop, yawning and then napping. Who will show the way? Who will be the key? Who will lead to the silver reward? That is not the solution. You want to know that? Go figure it out yourself. But, as you can probably tell by how it was written, they have the same kind of cadence that feels almost like a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. There's just this kind of cadence to it that's a little bit off-putting, almost as if it was written for a child. But, aside from the school having an amazing atmosphere, there's not really much here. So, let's go outside. I think I heard church bells earlier. Anyway, one quick comment that I actually nearly forgot to put in the script. There is a place called the Otherworld, and the first time you visit it is actually way earlier in the game, technically. But the school is the first time you can prominently see it. Simply put, the world will just transform into this hellscape, which is what you briefly saw earlier. You'll see it more and more throughout the game. Basically, when the world goes from looking normal to being shrouded in shadow and darkness and hard to see, that's the other world. Oh, after exiting, we go to the church, which is a little bit of a hassle. You do have to kind of pathfind your way through the town. But we go ahead and we meet the local crazy cat. Wait, Hi, sorry, I misspelled that. Local crazy cult lady who gives us a what charm called the Flowers. Here, the Flowers, a cage of peace. Harry reluctantly visits the hospital at this woman's request, where we immediately see the consequences of Harry's actions. Blame me. They didn't have health insurance. Hi, my name's Dr. Kaufman. After Kaufman's immediate reaction of shooting Harry, he cools down for a bit and we have a little bit of a discussion. Harry asking where his daughter is, with Kaufman pretty much saying, Look, your daughter's probably dead. dead. Might as well go and find your wife. So and Harry says his wife is dead. Which completely kills the conversation, so Kaufman just leaves. After this, we find a red liquid on the floor of Kaufman's office. And we grab a plastic bottle to put the liquid in. This will be an important tool that helps us later. After doing this, we mess around with the generator a little bit to make sure that the elevator works. And we head up to floor two, but the door is locked. We head up to floor three, but the door is locked. We head... That's odd, I don't remember there being a floor four, but if it's there, I guess we might as well check it. And... The hospital shifts into the other world. Why am I even questioning at this point? It just happens. But... Here we have a few more puzzles, one of which involves... Alice in Wonderland, of all things. And we meet Lisa Garland, our final character within Silent Hill. Well, not the final one, technically, but the final major player in the story. Harry asks Lisa for information. And speaking of information, before we go into the next part of the story, I do want to briefly say the hospital introduces us to a girl by the name of Alessa, who is a patient there. Finally, this is set up for something that happens way. later in the game, and, well, the main reason I'm mentioning it now is there's not really any better time to mention it, but also because the second half of the game is, well, a little bit more complicated, and I wanted to set that ground rule first. 
you'll see what I mean as we keep going from here. Anyway, we're approached by Dahlia, who says that we need to go to the other church in Silent Hill, and gives us a key to an antique shop. I have many questions. We make our way to the antique shop. However, before we can find the secret room, Sybil stops us and reveals that she found Cheryl breaking the law. The laws of physics at the lake. Look, all I'm saying is every time I've seen these laws broken, physics hasn't done crap. Physics needs a better lawyer. After this argument with Sybil over who is going to enter the secret room first, Harry enters, passes out, and once again meets Lisa Garland. Harry. Lisa? Then I'm in the At this point, Lisa explains a few things to Harry. Number one, Silent Hill is run by some strange cult. Are you okay? Dahlia Gillespie, a woman who was heavily involved with this cult, had a daughter who died in a fire. If you're sure. This actually mirrors something else. Not the whole daughter and fire part, but the cult thing actually takes from one of Silent Hill's biggest inspirations, Twin Peaks. If you know, you know. Harry wakes up again. We fight a... Is that a worm? Well, that's a, that answers the question. Harry would not love you if you were still a worm. And then we find Lisa again at the hospital. Lisa begins to beg Harry not to leave since she feels like she can't leave this place. However, Harry insists that he needs to get to the lake to find his daughter. So Lisa eventually relents and says, right next in the kindergarten, there's a path through the sewers. That might lead you to the resort town. After we exit the hospital, the feeling is tense, and we walk up a set of stairs, and surprise, surprise, that worm was actually a caterpillar. And also, surprise, I'm actually an idiot, and now it's a moth. We kill the moth, and... Well, after this, we go into the sewer, and really, there's not much that happens there. It's kind of an uneventful segment. And we exit into the resort side of Silent Hill. Now, from here, it kind of branches out a bit. There's an optional side quest that you can do with Dr. Kaufman, and doing that side quest pretty much incentivizes getting the good ending. Or, I guess I should say... The side quest is required for the good ending of the game. Essentially, all that you find out here is that Kaufman's the one responsible for dealing drugs. And that's why Sybil's here. So the person Sybil's looking for is Dr. Kaufman. When we find this information out, we go to a houseboat on the docks to talk to Sybil. Hold on. There are two seals left that we need to deal with. One is in the lighthouse, which Harry decides to take. And the other one is in the amusement park, which Sybil decides to take. I mean, it's kind of on them for trusting Dahlia, who gave them this information, but... Anyway, Harry decides to quickly sprint his way up to the lighthouse, but when he gets there, he notices that Alessa's spirit is there, but the seal's already done there. Which means that Sybil is walking into a trap. Harry quickly hurries back from the houseboat to the amusement park. So, uh... It turns out that Sybil decided to grab some gas station sushi or something on the way here because she is not acting like herself, immediately shooting at us. We begin to fight Sybil, and here's where the endings come into play. If you throw a bottle, yeah, the bottle I mentioned like 10 minutes ago, if you remember that thing, at Sybil, then you can save her and the game continues. Or you can just die attempting the other ending because you forgot how much health you have. 
After we beat Sybil, we arrive in a location known as Nowhere. A name which at first I felt was odd. This place clearly exists, why would it be called Nowhere? But the more and more I look around, the more I realize and think this place itself acknowledges it shouldn't exist. The rooms are forced together in a way that makes little sense. Objects that earlier just appeared randomly throughout the other world are now vital to the puzzles. There's something very wrong about nowhere. Something that I can't quite put my finger on. But even beyond that, this is a reflection of the one thing I've been glossing over, Alessa. See, it's revealed that Alessa isn't just some girl from Silent Hill. She's Dahlia's daughter. She's also Cheryl's mother, in a way. With all the information that we have, I think I can finally piece together the story of Alessa and how Cheryl fits into all of this. See, what happened years ago in Silent Hill? Long before Harry Mason stumbled upon the town, his Dahlia Gillespie had a daughter named Alessa. Alia desired for her daughter to become the vessel for the god of the Order of Silent Hill. Alessa, however, did not want this fate. Despite the fact that she had the powers and the aptitude for it, she desired her own life. She desired a normal life, a childhood. But Dahlia ripped that from her. Slowly, but surely, Lessa was forced into this position. Forced into a ritual where she was burned alive. Yet somehow she survived. Under the care of Dr. Kaufman, Dahlia Gillespie, and a young nurse, Lisa Garland. However, Lisa wasn't like the other two. Lisa's story is fairly dark, and as such, I felt it was fitting to provide a content warning right here. So if any of this seems like it would be uncomfortable for you, please feel free to skip this section. Timestamp should be in the description. Ask the doctor to let me quit being in charge of that patient. It's too weird. Still alive, but with wounds that won't heal. Told the doctor I quit. Won't work at that hospital anymore. Room is filled with insects. Even with doors and windows shut, they get in to spite me. T to the hospital. Feeling bad, need to throw up, but nothing comes out, vomiting only bile. But in pus, low out from the bathroom faucet, I try to stop it, but it won't turn off. Need drug. Help me. Unlike Dahlia and Kaufman, Lisa was not here of her own free will. Kaufman had given her drugs, which she quickly became addicted to. And according to a few sources within Team Silent, Lisa died a few years before the events of Silent Hill of a drug overdose. But the saddest part is that even with this death, she couldn't escape until Harry? this moment Lisa, when everything came crashing down once more. Now. Why I'm still alive even though everyone else is dead. I'm not the only one who's still walking around. I'm the 
the same as them? I just hadn't noticed it before. Lisa. Stay by me, Harry. Please. I'm so scared. Help me. Save me from them. Please. Harry. of you who might not have understood what exactly is going on the Lisa that we've known is a spirit the human Lisa is dead and has been dead but despite this this spirit feels more human more compassionate than many other characters that we've encountered Even so, Lisa acknowledges that she can't exist. It hurts for her too, but she must find something. This arc is finished in one of the endings where she gets her just revenge on Kaufman. Speaking of the endings, I'm not actually going to go into them in this video. Mainly because you can go into that on your own. But there is one detail that I do want to say. In the good ending, the true ending, Lessa gives Harry a baby. Harry takes this child and runs off into the fog. And in a statement that I believe will age completely well, we'd never hear from Harry Mason again. Even going beyond the story implications of Lisa's death, the way it's shot, the way everything is made with this scare is exemplary of what Silent Hill is at its best. It's tragic. The game itself seems like it can't believe what's happening before its eyes. That something so innocent, so tragic, can be so horrifying that Harry can't even stand the sight of it. It's, that's just Silent Hill. That's what this town is. That's, uh, Silent Hill. My only issue with the game is not even the game itself, but the availability. Right now, there are two ways to play this through legitimate releases. One is to find the PS1 release, which... I'm not spending that much money on just one game. The other option is to buy the PS3 re-release. Which might not be physically possible for everyone, not just because you might not own a PS3, but also because the PS3 store is very likely going to be shut down within the upcoming years. So I am begging Konami at this point, re-release this game. It can be through a collection or something, it's just the original Silent Hill needs to be available. And while a remake would be great, I think what makes this game work so so much for me is that it weirdly enough gets better with age that uncanny effect just is more and more prominent the further we progress technology wise and well i want this game to be back 
as it originally was. And... When this game is re-released, or if, because this is Konami we're talking about, I want it to be as it originally was. Silent Hill 1, despite its rough edges and faults, is more than worthy of your time and an experience that I wholly suggest that you should have yourself. Even though I've said a lot about the story of this game, that's not everything. There's something about playing the game yourself that I find makes it just as effective of an experience when you go back in. Alright then. That is Silent Hill. Why am I still here? Hair hurts.